realness. All right, Betty, you there? Yes, I'm here. Leo, you, you there? I'm here. Oh, yeah. Introducing authentic realness. Hello, hello, everyone. We are back for another episode of our Authentic Realness podcast. Realness. And this is Aaron R. Plush. Such a amazing journey. And as I've said on so many episodes, almost sounding like a broken record right now, and I'm okay with that, that I am enjoying this journey, that... Who would have known that something as simple as having a weekly podcast would be something that's so fulfilling for me to be able to get out the thoughts that are associated with Aaron R. Plush Consultant Independent Contractor, which also gives you all an opportunity and a glimpse to be able to see how my mind works, how I work with my clients, where I'm growing from a corporate and professional perspective. And then having fun in the process. So we have Fabi back with us this week. Fabi, say hello. Hi, everyone. We're happy to have you back, my friend. Happy to be back. Thank you. Excellent. And then we have Theo tonight as well, sir. Good evening. You're in a good mood. And you're going to say hello tonight? Yeah, I'm going to be in a good mood tonight. Look at you. (laughs) I already hear you, (laughs) ladies. Right there sounds like you're ready to rock and roll. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Well, with that, we're going to jump right in. So tonight's topic is one that I've been looking forward to. And as we were preparing for this particular episode, I shared with both Fabi and Theo that there are really two books that I always have with me. The first and most important one being the Bible, God's Holy Bible, as a Christian, to be very specific. And then the second I'd mentioned in previous episodes, which is the book Think and Grow Rich. And I shared with you all that I've crossed out the word rich on the cover. I've crossed out the term rich with throughout the book. And as I'm reading the book, I use it for thinking and growing. And that's thinking and growing from a holistic perspective that every aspect of my life as I'm thinking and growing when it comes to this podcast, when it comes to me as a consultant, when it comes to my spirituality, when it comes to life in general, I'm always attempting to be in a place of thinking and growing. And one of the amazing and wonderful things that this book does, it addresses this very significant topic for me about thoughts being things. So we're going to pause there for a second and process what that's saying, because we all know in very certain terms, no ifs and buts about it, don't care how you slice or dice it. Thoughts are very much so intangible. I can't touch a thought. But this book is challenging you to say, but hey, your thoughts are things. And the concept isn't that, oh, I can go touch a thought. The concept is that your thought can be significant enough that it can take on a tangible form. And that tangible form is when you have reached success. For example, if I'm thinking and I have a thought that, I want to work out. And in turn, we all work out for the sake of being healthy, for losing weight, for being in shape, and some of us to just be extremely vain and to get to a certain size for events such as class reunions. No, those say, whatever the case might be, we do it for many reasons. But the bottom line is that thought of working out will take on its physical equivalent 
of the results of working out have now turned to me being more healthy, to me being able to be more fit, to me being able to be a different size, for me to be able to lose weight or whatever the case might be. Now, certainly we all know I can't sit on my couch and expect for that to happen. If the plan and the thought is I want to be more healthy, the avenue that I'm going to take to do that is to work out, then I need to make sure that I gain some level of discipline and I have to do it and get on a schedule and potentially get a trainer and eat healthy and all those type things. For me as a consultant, though, I use that exact same concept. And I use the concept from the vantage point of if I'm working with you, you're my client, and you say to me in very certain terms that, hey, Aaron, I'm coming to you because I have an operational problem within my company. And I've looked at so many different avenues. I've hired new people. The team has reviewed it. And we just don't have any solutions. But what I'd like to do with you is I'd like to bring you on as a consultant and allow you to work with me to define what our strategy will be to correct this problem. And then in turn, we're going to work together to implement it. So to make this very simple for all of us, where the thoughts are becoming things will be is at that point of, when this client and I come to the conclusion of here's our solution, the thought is the solution. When that thought becomes a thing is when we implement that solution. Now, where it gets even more interesting and amazing with me is that, that every I is dotted, every T is crossed, whatever timeline we build out in our project or action plan, it will be done just like that. We're tracking it. We're looking at dates. We're updating tasks, we're making sure we have the right team members, we're ensuring I'm doing my part, the team's doing their part, and lo and behold, six months later, we've implemented and we have successfully taken that solution thought and allowed it to transmute itself into its physical equivalent of being a successful solution implemented for this client who had an operational issue that he or she potentially thought was going to end their company. Now you think about how exciting that is. Where this is going is the harsh reality is, and I, I use this example with Fabi as we were talking about this particular session, it's so easy to get people to spend their money on a physical product. You go to any store, you're gonna buy a loaf of bread, we don't even think about it. For my money, I'm exchanging for this product that's physical bread. It's going to cost. I'm going to pay for it, and I'm going to do what I have to do. When it comes to a service, not so much. Because so often we think, oh, I can do that myself. <laughs> and, and I can tell you all, because on the social side, I dabble in wedding planning and party planning, and I can't tell you how many people who've come to me after the fact and said, I really wish I would have gone with the planner. I really wish I would have gone with you because that party planning or that wedding planning that I thought that I was going to be able to do, I had no idea what I was doing. I spent all of this money and my day was a nightmare because there was no one there to implement to the letter of exactly what I wanted. So I had this vision in my mind of what it was going to be. And it was supposed to be a day that was just absolutely amazing. And it literally ended up being a nightmare because there was that missing component. My challenge to you all that are listening to this particular episode is to understand in very certain terms that folks who offer services like myself are just as important, if not more important, than folks that provide physical products. You just have to determine what it is that you need and then you also have to be honest with yourself as to what's really in your tool house and what you're really capable of doing, or more importantly, what you want to do. Because the last thing that you should be focusing on if you're having a corporate meeting or a party or a wedding is you having to run around doing everything. You need to be in the midst of whatever that is that you're having. 
if you're hosting, if you are the go-to person, well, I can tell you being the person who has to hold it all together as well and the behind the scenes person and all those type things, this event or experience is going to be over before you know it and you will not have enjoyed it and you would not have experienced it because all of your time would have been spent on trying to pull it together when you know that's truly not your skill set. So in certain terms, I'm totally sold by this whole thoughts or things concept. And it's so amazing as to how it's impacted so much of my professional life from me as a consultant, as well as the things that I do on the corporate side with the varying companies that I've worked with throughout my professional and corporate career. I'm going to come to you all now, Theo and Fabi, before I jump into the whole concept of transmutation, which is really amazing within the book as well. And I kind of alluded to it before. But I, I want to hear from you all as to you've now gotten my true overarching perspective on thoughts or things. What's your immediate thought, Fabi? For me, I actually have a question for you, Aaron. Absolutely. And my question is, as a client, and let's say I'm a client and I want to work with you personally. Yeah. What are some questions that a client can ask you in order to ensure that they are getting the quality that you, of course, will deliver? But to take their thoughts to things, what are some like probing questions that they can ask when they're wanting to work with you? Yeah, it's real simple. So the bottom line, and I've kind of alluded to this in a couple of previous episodes that we've recorded, but when you think about the whole concept of working with me, the first thing is to really come transparently. And, and that's being able to understand that when we get to that point of the consultation, we've already signed an NDA, which allows you to disclose whatever information that you want to disclose to me about your company. That transparency allows us to truly get to a point of understanding, is it that what you're needing for your company, Fabi, is it a service that I truly offer? I had shared with Theo that recently I had somebody to reach out to me saying, oh, I need to have a website developed. Well, yes, I have a technical background. And for those people who know that and know I, I've done websites in past lives, but that's not something that I'm offering mm -hmm. under the eight products of Aaron R. Plush Consultant, the independent contractor in this phase of life. So that conversation ended very quickly that, no, I don't do websites. So in turn, I am able to connect you with the folks who did my website for both right. me as a consultant and independent contractor, as well as for me on the more social and creative side as well. And that was a very quick win for my web team, sent mm -hmm. that person over, they're working with them and they're going to develop. So that's one component. It's just that transparency allows us to really get to is what you're looking for a service that I offer within the eight services that I offer. So that's item number one. The second component to that would be in very certain terms beyond the transparency. Let's truly talk about the problem. Like the client has to be willing to share with me, hey, operationally, we are having a problem with our rhythm of the business, mm -hmm. that we're doing a great job with our overall delivery of the product that we are selling. Where we're struggling though is our behind the scenes of how do we get to that product is less than optimal. We would like to get to a place where we can replicate every time as we're developing our product that it's consistently the same and that we have systems in place, that we have varying concepts that will allow us to produce in an amazing way each and every time. So where that comes from is, in addition to the transparency, it's coming in with a very pointed, hey, Aaron, here is my problem. Right. And then the last component to that, Fabi, and I'm, I love the fact that you've asked this, this question because it's a great one, it's very simply understanding, is it a good fit? Mm -hmm. Is it that the style of my directness, of my expectation of 
there being a spirit of excellence with my upbeat, spectacular, as always, which you're always going to get, is that something that's a good synergy for both of us? Mm -hmm. Is it a good fit? And in turn, the questions that will help that potential client understand that is under, is helping me to understand, well, here's how our team works. And here's where we have efficiencies. Here's where we have some inefficiencies. Here's some places that you might be able to help us beyond our rhythm of the business. So it's a combination of those three things, which starts with the overall transparency, generally, the very pointed, what is the problem? And then lastly, defining, is it a good fit that there is that synergy between me and you as a potential client? And those three things are always at the core and foundation of every client relationship that I have because I'm such a client focused consultant. Right. For me, it's all about the client and the client being happy and the client getting the product or service that he or she needs and that the client truly feels that, hey, after these six months, after this 12 months, after this 18 months, after this 24 months, this is one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had. And that is the expectation for me each and every time. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you. Yet, any perspective from you on the thoughts or things beyond your question? And if not, it's totally fine. <laughs> not at this time. Theo, what about you, sir? And Theo, if you're talking, you're on mute again, sir, producer. The shade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still actually chewing on the dialogue between you and Fabby, so I don't have nothing just yet. I'm just still digesting, but this is this is good thus far. So I, I'm going to call both of you to the carpet and say the concept is not that difficult, but Realness. I'm going to move on. <laughs> transmutation. The whole concept of transmutation, and I'm going to go to the textbook definition so that you all can have that first. And then after we go to the actual dictionary definition, then I'll come back to you all and give you my own personal experiences with the term. So the term transmutation from the dictionary is defined as the action of changing or the state of being changed into another form. Say that again, transmutation the action of changing or the state of being changed into another form. And that goes right back to what I've been saying the entire time, that literally the concept of thoughts or things is transmuting the intangible concept of thoughts to its tangible physical equivalent of those thoughts being a thing. And that's how I as a consultant, find my success in being able to be an implementer. If, if you talk to anyone who's ever experienced me from a corporate professional perspective, they will tell you in very certain terms that I get things done. Hence the mantra of me defining myself as a consultant that makes business happen. What that means in very certain terms is that you come with a a problem, my responsibility is making the business happen of that particular problem being solved. And that whole concept is being on the foundation of those thoughts that we're defining in your action plan, in your project plan, in your program plan, we are transmuting them into their physical equivalent. Now, one of the things that the book talks about, and, and this gets very intriguing, and, it, and it's especially important and intriguing for me because I'm so passionate about everything that I do. Like, for me, it's either all in or it's not. I don't do half-ass anything. If I can't give all of me, I just, I'm just not going to do it. And certainly, that may be a very 
negative thing for me at times. And I understand that. But I'm at the point of life that I am who I am and I accept you fully. Not to say that I'm at a point of life where I'm not open to evolving and developing and changing, but those components of myself that they just are what they are, that I embrace them, and that I know that I'm happy with them, I'm okay with that. And being passionate, if being passionate is ever seen as being a negative, then oh well, it is what it is. But the intriguing concept that the book talks about, it talks about addictions in general. And that's across the board. And of course, certainly when we hear addictions, we normally go to negative things. And the book goes there. It talks about how you can take those energies if you know that you potentially have any of those vices, be it a drug addiction, be it addicted to sex, be it addicted to porn, be it addicted to whatever, that you have the ability, if you want to, to take that energy that you are so passionate about those things and transmuting that energy to being something that allows you to be successful elsewhere. So specifically, the book talks about, like, well, if you have a, a really high sex drive and you know that you want to not engage there, you can take that high drive and shift that over to thinking and growing. And you could take that same drive that may not be seen as positive and use that into developing your business. To use that same energy to be successful on your job, to use that same energy to maybe pour time, more time into your family or whatever it is that you may want to do. So the book is definitely not a surface book. <laughs> And as we're continuing to have this conversation, it likely makes sense to people as to why I like the book so much, because it's raw. It, it, it addresses and deals with the realities of our lives, because how often have you all heard me say in this space, reality is reality. Too often we like to spend time in pretenses. Too often we like to spend time in la-la land. Too often we like to spend time in lies. And I've <clears> said on many occasions, we often lie to ourselves, other people, and attempt to lie to God. But the, here's the harsh reality. You can never lie to him because he knows our truth. So the fact that God always knows our truth, it's best to kind of maybe try to back away from some of those vices that we have. And the book is trying to help us understand that we can use those that energy that we put toward the vices, we can put that same energy to good. And allow that energy to be what catapults you to thinking and growing to success rather than putting it into those vices. Comments, thoughts from either of you. You know, the immediate thing that it comes to me, you know, at growing up as a, as a male, when, when you don't want to pursue a sexual escapade, they say go take a cold shower. Okay. When it comes to from a consultant standpoint, because we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're staying centered there from a consultant standpoint, when you're working with a client, how do you shift, shift when, when a client's focus is one area, but you see that that focus is going to cause a downfall here and you need to get them to the left side of things. How is the approach and how important is that approach with your, uh, building building through that 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 client client customer relationship type thing and getting them to the end product that they're looking for it's real simple that's where the transparency comes in mm -hmm. because what you'll find with me is the same directness that i have with human fabby is the same directness that i have in all aspects of my life mm -hmm. so in turn with the client because ultimately one of the things that i immediately do is i'm a relationship builder and in being a relationship builder it's very important that you establish trust and credibility immediately. And those are the two things that I'm always looking to do with my clients. So when my clients get to a point where they see me as a credible source and they trust me, they know that if I'm coming to them to, to say to them, hey, we're at a point where we potentially need to look at a shift. Notice the terminology there, potentially. 
Because ultimately, my client's the boss. They pay me. Mm -hmm. And in turn, if they tell me they don't want to make that shift that you're talking about, it is what it is. Now, I will note it in my consulting notes. It'll be in the action plan that we had a differing opinions. We decided to go the route of what client ABC wants to go with. But the harsh reality is that doesn't typically happen with me because my clients trust me so much that they know if I'm going to present something to them, it's already well vetted. It's already well thought through. Potentially it's experience that I've had elsewhere as mm -hmm. to what's driving the potential shift. And because of that, I've found it very easy for me to make transitions with clients when necessary. Good stuff. Good stuff. And that's dope detail into the world of what is to be expected within, within your services. So that's dope stuff. Yeah, it's no doubt about it. And I, the key thing that I want that people to take from this episode is this is not a game for me. Nor mm -hmm. is this something where I am talking like, oh, I'm a consultant. I provide these eight services and this is what I do. No, this is, this is lived professional experience, people. These are things that I've learned. And my learning has come from a lot of trial and error. But here's the harsh reality. I have global experience. And that's not a, oh, woe is me. Let me pat myself on the back. No, that's a fact. That's a reality. That's a part of what goes along with who I am as a consultant. And I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to throw it in anybody's face. I'm not going to be pompous or arrogant or any of those type things that I don't need to be. The, the product, the services, and what I do, they speak for themselves. I don't have to do a whole lot of talking about what I do. Mm -hmm. I like for my work to do the talking for me. This platform, however, just gives you a further glimpse into the why. It gives you a further glimpse into, ooh, I've never even really thought about that. Like, So you're telling me at the foundation of your business, which is a service business, where you're a consultant that provides eight specific services, that the core of that is truly God and all of my beliefs in him and who he is. But then a, a, a second level up from that core is thinking and growing by Napoleon Hill, who clearly he, he has the accolades. His, his, his background, his story, his journey, his life is quite telling of the success <laughs> that he saw and how he went about seeing the success in his life. And then a concept that was pulled from his book that thoughts are things and that we all have the ability to be able to transmute things from an intangible space over into a physical realm in your business that is predicated upon action plans and project plans and program plans will be able to help me with my business problem in a way that we know we're going to have success because you're taking the intangible and you're making it its physical equivalent to the point where literally I really could sell my business as being a product oriented business. Mm -hmm. Although it is services in what I'm describing tonight I could say, hey, here are the eight products I offer. Because in the realm of what we're talking about, those services are now things. And they're things because you know if you work with Aaron R. Plush, consulting the independent co contract in those eight product areas, you are going to have success. Not me, not possibly could, you are. And it's because of the foundation of how the business has been devised, created, and developed. That's good stuff there. But I, I even even beyond that, I always have to have to put it in there. The thing that I feel like sets you from the rest is it's a lifestyle for you. Right? This is what you live. This is what you breathe. This is what you can do. 
without even thinking about the drop of the dime because it's, it's, it's purpose inside of you. So to, to go back to what you alluded to a minute ago, it's, like it's not a game. This is, this is what you do through and through. And I hope that the listeners can hear the passion and hear the drive and hear, hear the rawness and transparency, even in our conversation tonight. Because if you want a good consultant, that transparency piece is going to have to be there so that they can get you to where you need to be. It, even if it's not me, mm-hmm. don't kid yourself. If you're working with a consultant and you're not being real with them and you're not being transparent with them, you are setting yourself up, not for the consultant to fail, but for you to fail. Because the consultant can only help you as far as he or she knows the vantage point of what the problem is, the extent of the problem. We don't need anything sugar-coated. We need the truth. We need to know exactly how bad it is. Fabi, you're quiet. (laughs) I'm digesting everything and taking everything in. Mm. But what really stood out to me was going back to the point you made previously in, in regards to some of the things around addictions and turning that into maybe a positive or using that Mm -hmm. energy somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, especially in the professional setting. It is. Yeah. So that's not something that I've just been digesting and totally agree with as well. The book goes into significant detail. So I would highly, and I'm going to rail to what you advise that I could do that double click down in really making sure that, I bring emphasis to the items that I talk about because I talk about Nike often where I talk about just do it because that is a part of of, of who I am and how I operate. I talk a lot about Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. We're crossing out the rich and we're making it thinking and growing by Napoleon Hill and how much of that book can be used for your own personal development. But I tell you, Fabi, that particular chapter that talks about that whole transmutation perspective and how you can take your vices and use it for good, it's amazing. And Mm -hmm. for a lot of people, I will go as far as to say that it very well was breakthrough material for them because they were able to overcome some of those addictions by understanding that it's not necessarily quote unquote, the outcome of this, it's right. you deciding how you're going to use this and what you're going to use it for. Right. And the, the premise is that the energy is the same. It's how you're choosing to use that energy. Right. Yeah. For me, one thing that came to mind immediately when you mentioned that is, and I, I feel like I've been guilty of it in the past is, aimlessly scrolling right on social media or distracting mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. with social media Absolutely. and then two hours go by and it's like, wait, I didn't even get to do X, Y, and Z. Right. So Absolutely. it's like using that. And I've cut myself off a lot by now I have timers like set up on my phone for how long I can do certain things. That's just the way that it, it's been able to help me. Sure. But it's now like finding different ways to repurpose that energy or allocate that energy, I should say into yeah. other things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that same time you were spending scrolling, you could have been using that for reading. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Or or you could have been using that for working out or Mm -hmm. whatever it is that you desire to do, you could have been using that for something else. And certainly there's nothing wrong with having a set amount of time. It's almost like ensuring that you have set times for your children, for them to watch TV, set Mm -hmm. times for them to Play video games, but if you have your child like, oh, he or she can watch as much TV as, no, we have a problem. Right. (laughs) And unfortunately, we can, quote unquote, try to have these parameters set on our kids, but many of us need to set some parameters on us. Yeah. And that's the hard part. (laughs) And I won't go about to the people who do these things during work time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> won't go there won't call anybody yeah. out please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about the people who do these things during church you at church but you on Instagram what 
Yeah, it's a lot of guilty souls of that one there. Yeah, like so you so plus you take notes during the sermon and you send the notes out to a group of people every week. Yeah. Because the notes people, newsflash, they're not just for me. And they're not just for you. They're for all of us. Right. And in turn, me taking the notes, it's it keeps me from being distracted. It mm-hmm. allows me to be engaged into the sermon. It allows me to be able to be able to go back and read the verses in which my pastor came from. But all of that goes back to like if you're in a meeting and we're talking about critical topics, but Theo has nothing to say because Theo's on Facebook. <laughs> but then at the end of the year, when Theo doesn't get that performance review expectation that he is expecting, oh, it's now his manager's fault. No, it's yours. If you're honest with yourself, because that engagement comes from being present. You all can't be on this episode with me doing other stuff. Like the only thing that's on my mind right now is this episode of this hour ARP session on thoughts or things. That's it. Now, do I have several other things to do tonight? Absolutely. <laughs> Did I have several other things going on before this? Absolutely. But 30 minutes before, my mindset is focused on getting into the mindset of this particular session. And that's before the two of you and before the team that's going to be on the session. Then it's that 30 minutes with you all. Then it's the recording. That, folks, newsflash, yet again, that's an example of how I work. Like everything mm-hmm. for me is methodical. Everything for me is thought out. There's no, oh, let's just jump on and see where this goes. Actually not. Even if it's a brainstorming session, I'm still going to spend some time with me to collect my thoughts before the brainstorming session so that I can be prepared to contribute. And that's the beauty in working with you, Aaron. Oh, I, I can tell you a lot of people definitely will not get that same level of excellence. That's something oh, that you no. definitely offer. And to me, Fabi, though, it's a, it's a no brainer though, because it's like, Absolutely. how much easier is it to be prepared than to not be prepared? It's right. nothing worse than just being thrown into something. Oh, no, what you think? What? I don't think anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm literally still processing what's going on here. I don't think a thing. But if I've had time to collect my thoughts, if I've had time to kind of bounce it around in my head, then I can have some perspective. I can be in tune to the conversation and then I can offer a lot. Right. But I can't do that when I cheat myself. Mm-hmm. For the many of folks who are listening who played any kind of sport, you don't just show up like, oh, we're here to play. No, (laughs) no. There was a lot of time that your coach and your coaching staff spent (laughs) in preparation before getting to practice. (laughs) And then guess what? There's time during practice and there's time after practice that we do to forget. Watching the Kansas and Kansas State game, basketball game last night and like it's it's so funny because in like the closing seconds of the game, the Kansas State coach, you clearly saw him defining what the play call was going to be with his coaches first. Then he went to the team to say, hey, here's the play we're going to run. And when the play was exactly executed in the way that he knew it was going to, and lo and behold, Kansas State won. The expression of the coach was like, that's me every time. (laughs) (laughs) Because it was a literal, you all don't get. uh, And clearly this is a play that he'd already had. But then he went to the coaching staff and said, okay, this is the one. Do you all agree? Then he goes to the team and says, hey, this is what we're going to run. And then the team runs it to perfection for a coach. That's heavenly bliss. And and, and when I tell you that he expressed it, <laughs> he expressed it. It's like, 
I think every cell of his body <laughs> was having a moment of joy. That's how I am with my clients because there's so much time and energy that goes in behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, during the scenes, being intentional, being deliberate. It's not a game. It's not a joke. This is real deal stuff for me. And I care <laughs> if there's success or not. I care if everything is done with the spirit of excellence. I care if there are misspellings in <laughs> any kind of post, anywhere. That is a problem. You cannot expect to be taken seriously when you have all kind of grammatical and typos and all kinds of stuff in any form of communication. I don't care who it's with. Don't care how amazing of a product. I don't care how much of amazing of an effort. I don't care what it is. You're now seen as a joke. And the only person that can fix that is you. So I come full circle. Everything that I do professionally, on a corporate level, that's going to be public facing, there will always be another set of eyes that sees it before it's, it hits any public eyes. And it's for one simple reason. I recognize my imperfections. I recognize that when you are the author, you see words that you think are there that aren't. Fabby reads, I'm like, hey, plush. <laughs> I know you thought this was here, but it's not. Here's a quick edit. How hard is that? Not hard at all. So I say that to say, what an amazing, 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 amazing episode. Thank you all for allowing me to get all that off my chest. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for being so <laughs> infinite in your approach and way and how you operate. And what you blessed me to be able to do, because all of this is because of you. And we're going to end this episode here. This is a, this is a perfect ending place. Anything last comments from either of you before we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer? I don't have anything. No comments for me. Perfect. Thank you both. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father God, I just thank you for your infinite wisdom, God. God, I, I thank you for just all the amazing and wonderful things that you're doing in the lives of your children. Because certainly, God, these are some difficult times. Just here today, it just seems that company after company that's laying people off. And certainly, as I've said on many occasions, Lord, it's, it's never easy to get that message of being laid off, being fired, not having a job, knowing you have a family, knowing you have bills. But God, we thank you for allowing us to know you and thank you for being our provider, God. God, thank you for just always giving us a discerning spirit to kind of understand what's happening even when we don't totally understand it, that we know that everything in life happens for a reason. God, we thank you for allowing us to be honest with ourselves because one of the things that I am often compelled by is when the writing's on the wall and folks don't read it. So God, my prayer tonight is that when folks will begin to start reading the writing on the wall in all phases of life, be it on the corporate setting, be it in professional settings, be it personally, be it socially, be it wherever, because too often, we as humans are finding ourselves in places where, like, oh, I'm surprised. How are you surprised when the writing's been there? And we have to kind of get off of our high horses of privilege because so often the reason why we don't see the writing on the wall is because we think that it impacts everybody but me. That's not how this life thing works. Anything in this life can happen to any of us at any time, and we all must understand that. I'll get off of that soapbox, God, and I'll just move on to saying, God, just thank you for this episode. Thank you for the revelation around thoughts or things. Thank you for me as a consultant. Thank you for what you're doing 
God and the lives of both Fabi and Theo as they are aligning with this particular podcast, as well as Pam and Laquan and all the many other people that you have connected with this, I'd ask that you would just continue to increase and expand their territories, expand their minds, and bless them and their families in tremendous ways. God, I'd ask that you continue to bless the audience of this particular podcast and allowing us to be able to reach the hearts, the minds, and ears of so many people and that folks might be transformed, God, after listening to these episodes. So God, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you, and we just thank you, Lord. And these and all other blessings, God, we ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Excellent episode. Excellent episode. Yes, that was good. Definitely. Just want to remind our listeners, as I always do in every episode, that the greatest part of our authentic realness, ARP realness is each and every one of you, because certainly there is no podcast. There's no ARP. There's no authentic realness podcast. There's none of this without you all. And I certainly want you all to know how significant you are. And then in closing, as always, until next time, let us all be spectacular together.